LeBron James is one of the best students of the game of basketball that we've ever seen. Opposing coaches like Doc Rivers and Dwayne Casey have even said as much, and it should be obvious how dedicated he is to his craft by his performance on the floor. However, sometimes James will just straight up tell you how devoted he is. On Sunday after the Cleveland Cavaliers lost Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals to the Boston Celtics, LeBron answered a reporter's question about the fourth quarter that revealed his photographic memory. The result is pretty insane, with James rattling off specific movements within each play during multiple possessions to open the fourth quarter. Via Twitter, I'm not sure what's more impressive, the memory recall are that fit. Our own Dan Feldman put together a video comparing LeBron's recall to the plays in question. Wow, as the Celtics keep defying expectations, from getting the no. Two seed in the East despite Gordon Hayward going down, through rolling through the first two rounds of the playoffs without Kyrie Irving, then thumping the Cavaliers in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals the legend of Brad Stevens is growing into mythical proportions. His game plans, his out-of-timeout plays, all of it has worked this postseason. Is Stevens getting too much credit? Celtics legend Robert Parrish was on Sirius XM NBA Radio and said just that. I think he's getting a little too much praise, but I like what he's doing. They're giving him all the love like he's won three or four championships. Win something first with all the love he's getting. Now granted, don't get me wrong, he's a solid coach. With the love that he's getting from the media, you'd think the Celtics won two or three championships. I'm not saying that Brad Stevens should not be getting praise for the job that he's done because I feel that he's done an outstanding praise. I'm just saying that the amount of praise he's getting, you'd think that he's won a championship or two. They don't give Steve Carr that much love, Parrish isn't wrong here. Stevens has done an amazing job, he got the top spot on my ballot for coach of the year, but in praising him we tend to only look at the talent he has lost, Hayward and Irving, and not at what he has. Al Horford is a five-time All-Star for a reason. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are both number three overall draft picks. Beyond those guys, Dan Yanch has assembled a deep and athletic team that doesn't have a lot of holes, this is a good roster, even without those stars. Credit Stevens for both bringing them together and not letting them fall apart this season in the face of adversity. Stevens has done a great job, he has built a winning culture there that may well bring more banners to the garden. There's a lot to like about Stevens and other players like him as well, guys want to play for him. But let's give the players some credit, too. Boston's passing, player movement, and pace torched the Cavaliers' defense in Game 1, and they did it getting inside. Boston had 60 points in the paint and met little resistance there, shooting 22 of 30 at the rim and 8 of 15 from floater range. Al Horford did as he pleased against Kevin Love and started 7 of 7 shooting, while the Cavaliers' recognition and help rotations were unimpressive. To put it kindly, all that led to a lot of speculation the Cavaliers would start Tristan Thompson in Game 2. At an off-day practice Monday, Tyrone Lue sounded like a guy who was going to start Thompson on Tuesday night, via Dave McMenamin of ESPN. Looking at the statistics, over the last three years with at least 30 possessions, defending him, out of all the guys that have guarded Al Horford, Tristan is no. One in the league defending Al Horford, Lou said. So that's a good thing, you know. We wait, starting Thompson, before the series started, but we'd won 7 out of 8 and we weren't going to adjust until someone beat us and we didn't play well with that lineup that got us to this point. Lou said. 
All of that happened Monday. Nothing is official, and this is the playoffs so smoke screens are everywhere, but this sounds like Lou is leaning toward going big, which would move Kyle Korver to a bench role. Thompson wasn't exactly dominating in Game 1, but he did have 8 points and 11 rebounds, 4 offensive, in 21 minutes off the bench. He was minus 12 in those 21 minutes, Love was minus 13 in his 30. Still, Thompson provides a level of defense and presence in the paint Cleveland lacked and Boston exploited in Game 1. The biggest challenge for the Cavaliers in starting Thompson is he can't space the floor as a shooter, allowing Horford, or Aaron Baines, who would get more playing time, to stay close to the rim and protect it. This is the Celtics, the coaching staff will have thought through how to attack when Thompson is on the floor, and the players will stick to the game plan with religious fervor. Whoever starts, Cleveland is going to be better in Game 2. LeBron James is going to look a lot more like the best player on the planet, the Cavaliers are not going to shoot 0 if 12 from 3 in the first half, and the defensive effort should be better. Game 2 is not going to be a blowout. But will all that and more Thompson be enough to take one on the road? That's another question. The Rockets have spent the last year thinking about the Warriors. Golden State insists it doesn't care about its opponent. But did the Warriors actually prefer a matchup with Houston, their foe in the Western Conference Finals? Chris Haynes on ESPN, I know how they feel. They want them just for the simple fact so they can just shut them up. That's it. That's it. So, it's not a concern. I will say this. A couple months ago, when Rockets beat Golden State last game of the regular season when these two teams faced off, I told, I went to Draymond. I went to KD. I said, look man, Rockets may be able to give you all some problems. And they basically cussed me out right there on the spot. Like, don't believe in that regular season hype? So, they're ready for this matchup. The Warriors claiming not care about their opponent is a great brag. They're just too good even to notice lesser squads like the Rockets or whomever. We also know enough about Golden State to know this isn't true. The Warriors motivate themselves with slights, real and imagined. And that includes gearing up for certain opponents. It's no surprise one would be the obsessed Rockets, who are just arrogant and scrappy enough to bait Golden State. Now, the Warriors must actually prove their level above Houston. TJ McConnell has kept up with the 76ers, Ascension. The point guard has gone from a capable rotation player on a tanking team to a capable rotation player on a good team. He's definitely worth keeping at his minimum salary team option for next season, $1,600,520. But by Philadelphia exercising his option, McConnell would become an unrestricted free agent in 2019. If the 76ers declined his option, they could make him a restricted free agent this summer and more tightly control his long-term future. So, there was a real decision to make. Jessica Camarada of NBC Sports Philadelphia, president of basketball operations Brian Colangelo said Friday the Sixers will exercise McConnell's contract option. Unlike the Nuggets, who should decline Nikola Jokic's team option in a similar cheaper restricted scenario, Philadelphia right to exercise McConnell's. Because of his physical limitations, the 6'2 McConnell tops out as a solid backup. He's already 26, suggesting he's near his ceiling if he hasn't hit it already. Better to guarantee another bargain year out of him, especially because that saved money can go toward bigger goals. If he walks in 2019, it wouldn't be the end of the world. The 76ers might even prefer he walk by that point. 
McConnell stepped up during an arduous rookie year for no. One pick Markel Fultz. But Fultz has far more upside as the traditionally sized point guard who sometimes pairs with Ben Simmons and sometimes initiates the offense himself. Ideally for Philadelphia, Fultz would seize that role and make McConnell expendable. In the meantime, McConnell will finish off his hinky special contract and provide the 76ers with insurance behind and next to Simmons.